OK, ready to, be to begin when oh. you are, Chair. OK, thank you, Amy. Welcome, everyone, to our first remote community liaison meeting. Um, may I remind everyone present here at the meeting, it will be recorded via the internet and this recording archived for future viewing. Could all participants mute themselves when not speaking in order to avoid any background noise or feedback when other participants are speaking? If a partic participant wishes to speak, can they please put up their hands if they can be seen on screen or use the raise hands and or chat function if they're an attendee. If any participant has difficulty hearing or being heard when they're addressing the committee, then they should let the chairman or democratic officer know if they have a webcam, then they should try turning this off as this will help with the broadband or Wi-Fi so they could be heard. Thank you. And can I pass you to Amy now, please? Thank you very much, Chair. Um, you've asked me to um, provide uh, the apologies for you this evening. Um, I'd just like to confirm that we have received apologies from um, Mrs Hodges for Barrytown Council, um, although I do believe that Councillor Perks, a member on the committee, um, is acting on behalf of the council, Barrytown Council as well this evening. Um, we've also had apologies um, from Mr. Christian Tatt from Sully and Lavenock. Um, and we've also had apologies from Mr. Ray Thomas for Flandau Community Council. Um, I'd also like to pass on some apologies for, for Mr. Reid, who, who will be joining us, um, but he will need to leave at seven o'clock this evening. Um, for the sake of our Town and Community Council representatives that are on the line and able to hear me, um, they, they have the raise hand function as we go through this evening. So as we come to agenda items, they are able to raise their hands to signal to the democratic officers that they wish to speak verbally to the committee. However, they can also provide just a written question to the committee through the question function that they have on their control panel. Um, instructions for both of these have been provided to the representatives in advance. Um, I'd also just like to um, inform all of the committee um, that back in January on the 28th, um, we were hoping to have brought the um, Town and Community Council Charter Action Plan to the committee, but obviously with this being our first committee back, um, with the COVID situation, um, we haven't been able to make that happen, um, but we will be hopefully bringing that to you to the next committee meeting, which is scheduled for January. Thank you, Chairman. That's all of the apologies I've received so far. Thank you, Amy. Going on to um, agenda item two, minutes of the meeting held on the 28th of January. Can I ask that the committee approve the minutes subject to the acknowledgement of Councillor Andrew being present in the last meeting? Could I have a seconder, please? I second. Second. Thank you very much. Um, agenda item four, I don't think Chief Inspector Tony Williams is in yet. Is that correct, Amy? Sorry, Chair, do you mind if we just confirm there are no declarations of interest this evening, please? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Are there any declarations of interest this evening? OK, thank you, Chairman. Yeah. OK, and shall we move on to agenda item five? Chair, Chair Mr. Tony Williams does appear to be online. Right, OK. Can, can you... Hello, Tony. I'm afraid that signal was rather cut up. Would you mind trying again? I'm afraid not, Tony. I'm afraid not. It's um, it's jumping around. I'm afraid. Okay, I'll try and dial in. So I'll try and connect via telephone shortly. Okay, Tony. Yes, if you try and connect on the telephone for us, please, and we'll continue with Christian's presentation first. Good, good evening, Christian. Can I ask you 
Um, Mr Chris Hadfield is the Operational Manager for South Wales um, Fire and Rescue Service and if you could continue with your report that would be excellent, thank you. Yes, evening Chair, hope you can hear me clearly. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll stay on the um, microphone only because I know that um, putting a video on does cause confusion on my laptop. So, um, okay, so this is really you. an opportunity to give you an update from South Wales Fire and Rescue Service, uh, our response to the coronavirus pandemic and where we currently are. Um, so I'll start at the beginning. So during the pandemic, uh, we experienced quite low levels of staff absence. Um, we were we developed a real clear and efficient effective operational response that's been maintained throughout um, and our staff have been particularly good for us um, and uh, our staff also volunteered to assist and support our colleagues in the Welsh Ambulance Service Trust. Um, within that then we also maintain a good command and control structure internally and the levels of PPE throughout. Um, our key, key part for us over the pandemic is maintaining service delivery in other words, fire engines uh, going out and serving the communities, which is something we've managed to um, adhere to. So our operational competency training has continued right the way through this, so has our initial trainee courses. Um, one thing we, that did hamper us a little bit was the effectiveness to carry out uh, our prevention and protective, protection work and education activities. So the prevention work being our community safety activities, where we go into people's homes um, for uh, home fire safety checks, and our protection activities, which was the business fire safety element of it, um, and education obviously going into schools. So um, certainly during the pandemic, those reduced significantly, but we have now modified our ways of working, have changed our ways of working to um, allow us to have more delivery at doorstep to get over the thresholds, um, but also to um, carry out online home fire safety checks. So that's something now we're going to continue going into the future. And it's probably been a bit more effective for us. Uh, internally, we've also, like everybody else, improved the way we communicate, uh, both internally and externally. Uh, and we've just introduced all our stations now uh, with new uh, video conferencing facilities that allow us now to connect up as a service. But like I said, both internally and externally, we're key partners. I guess our focus right now is making sure we restart all our preventative activities. Um, uh, and at the moment, that's something which we're working on. And that includes our youth programs. Uh, one of such is the Fire Cadets branch of Barry Mersey Services Station. So it's um, we've been trying to keep a COVID secure environment at all our stations, certainly in the Vale of Morgan and Bridgend. Um, so having our Fire Cadets back in Barry has been uh, fantastic. Um, last time I was here, I did report we were opening the first Quad Mersey Services Station at Lantern Major. Um, I'm proud to announce that I did go ahead just in the nick of time before the lockdown all kicked in. Um, and like I said, there, this is a this is a really good opportunity for our emergency services to work together and, um, and share a facility. So we've been there now a couple of months together, and it's um, it is really working particularly well, um, even though COVID has um, has, has come across uh, our bows. So that's really just a, a snapshot of where we've been as a service um, during a coronavirus pandemic. We're we're still not obviously out the woods as any as anybody any other service or emergency services. So we've still got our uh, command cell set up in our headquarters um, just to ensure that um, should any second wave come through, then we're prepared in order to keep our service delivery, frontline appliances, and like I said, uh, making sure our service to the communities. So what I've looked at is um, just some comparative data really of um, this time last year, our first quarter and second quarter uh, 19 in comparison to 20. Um, and it's quite a reassuring picture um, that we haven't seen a huge spike in home dwelling fires or accidental dwelling fires. In fact, uh, for the Vale of Morgan, we've seen a fall of 23%, uh, which is really encouraging. Um, we did see a small rise of 54% in the Vale of Morgan for refuse fires, um, but we attribute that to the fact that people couldn't get to um, a local amenity site for a period of time, and we were experiencing refuge fires out in the open. Um, but I'm Pleased to say now that has now reduced. Um, one of the most reassuring ones for the Vale of Morgan at the moment is our reduction in road traffic collisions, um, and that's a dramatic drop from last year of 70%. Um, yes, we had less cars on the road during lockdown, um, but a 70% fall is quite dramatic. Um, and in particular, that would be in the Cowbridge area. So something's going particularly well for our road traffic collision work, both with um, the police ourselves and WAST. 
So hopefully that gives you a snapshot of where we are. Um, and I'm willing to take any questions if, if anyone has any. Okay, thank you very much for that, Chris. Can I suggest that we take questions first from town and community reps via Matthew, who is monitoring the web chat. So Matthew, do you have any questions from councillors, please? And we can pause for a moment while we have a catch up. Hello Chair, just to confirm, I haven't had any questions through. Okay, we can come back to that, but are there any questions from Vale councillors, please? No, oh, Councillor Penrose. Uh, thank you, Chair. It's not a question. I just think we should include in minutes uh, a vote of thanks to the emergency services for their activities during the COVID uh, lockdown periods. Yeah, that's, that's a good statement. Thank you. I think we'd all support that and pass on our thanks. Thank you, uh, Councillor Penrose. I'll make sure um, that's included in the minutes. Well, I'll pass Thank it on you. to uh, Chief Fire Officer Jake Wick. Uh, are there any questions coming via web chat or is all quiet? Okay. Thank you very much. Can I thank you very much for joining us tonight, Chris? And we look forward to hearing from you again in the near future. Yes, of course. Thank you very much. You're welcome to leave this remote meeting. <laughs> thank you. Um, if we go back to agenda item four, is Chief Inspector Tony Williams with us now? Good evening, Chair. Can you hear me now? I've um, yeah. used old-fashioned yeah. technology now instead. Okay, thank you very much. Nice to hear you're with us. If you'd like to present your report then, thank you. Yeah, thanks very much indeed. Um, just to let you know, I'm, I'm Firearms Commander for South Wales Police tonight, so if, if uh, an incident comes in, I may have to go, so hopefully it won't. So um, uh, I do apologise in advance if that happens. Um, Thanks for the opportunity to speak to you all, albeit um, unusually uh, remotely. Um, it seems like an age ago now since I last updated you with, with policing activity. And much in the same vein as Chris's update, it's really around what's been going on since the lockdown. Um, and obviously how we've managed that locally and what it looks like for us moving forward, as well as just normal policing matters, which to be honest, we haven't stopped. Um, so it has been a difficult time to get the balance of the two. And whilst it's been unprecedented for us all, really, as a society, it certainly has been for policing. And in my 23 years, obviously, I've never experienced anything like it, really. Um, but obviously, policing the regulations locally has been a challenge. Um, the police have really sort of endeavoured to engage, explain and encourage uh, at the start of the pandemic and indeed throughout the pandemic in terms of our conversations with the public. And occasionally it has been necessary to use enforcement as a mechanism. You know, things like paragliders coming from you know, Gloucestershire and Herefordshire and so forth to to Nash Point and, and those who were blatantly disregarding the, the, the rules and regulations that were um, applicable at that time. You know, we've had a number of vehicles removed. So we, we were punitive when we felt it was appropriate, but largely our approach is more about engagement and trying to encourage those um, to understand the regulations. And I think that's what we tried to certainly employ down in Barry Island, where we saw an influx of unprecedented numbers of visitors to South Wales during that period. And of course, in addition to the demands placed on officers in relation to COVID, um, we still had the normal policing business to to um, look after and to police. So, you know, missing persons, violence, drugs, robbery, etc., cetera, um, still ongoing uh, at unprecedented rates in addition to the COVID legislation. So the early sort of stages of the pandemic were, were challenging to say the least. Uh, just to give an example, really, of the type of demand that we were under in the Vale of Glamorgan, for the first three months of the pandemic, I think we had around seven and a half thousand incidents to attend and about 1700 of those were in relation to COVID breaches or, or that type of activity around the legislation. So it's about 25% or just there thereabouts of our demand were related to COVID breaches and COVID incidents. Um, the only redeeming thing for us from a demand perspective was obviously the nighttime economy was shut down. So, you know, that, that balance then, you know, that made up for that, if you like. So we didn't have to police the nighttime economy through the COVID restrictions on lockdown, but 
we certainly were inundated with demand in relation to COVID legislation. So in relation to that, we also had, as you will all be aware, um, unseasonably warm weather, children being home from school, furloughed employees, uh, and inability to travel abroad. So I know all of you will be aware of the increased footfall, if you like, at areas like Penarth, Esplanade, uh, Ogma by Sea, Barry Island, Cosmiston Lakes, and so forth. You know, it was a massive undertaking, and the number of visitors we had, and trying to keep them safe, and obviously police uh, other challenges at that time uh, were particularly um, challenging for all the staff. And then as the R number started to drop, crime started to go back up again. So, you know, as, as we started to un unlock the lockdown, if you like, back to normality, we were uh, indeed faced with uh, the normal patterns of criminality um, and they started to rise again through to normal levels. And over the last month or so, we've had a period where we were almost back to normal in terms of the way we policed. Uh, however, with the recent um, surge, if you like, in the virus, once again, in our community, we are back to that position whereby we, we are starting to have to police COVID related incidents. Although I would say that the initial synopsis from us is is the demand is far less. So over the weekend, for example, about 6% of our demand was related to sort of COVID breaches or house parties, whereas at, at the peak of the pandemic, that could have been up to about 30%. So, so we'll keep a close eye on that, really, in terms of where we go moving forward in terms of breaches of, of COVID regulations and, and the differences between each area. And as local authorities go into lockdowns, the challenge, really, of, of having consistency of approach um, so that's really where we've been over the last um, six months or so. And then just some, some headlines, really, and the sort of significant incidents across the Vale of Glamorgan. As I'm sure you'll all be aware, on the 25th of June, there was a, a significant disorder in Ogmo by Sea, which was a, a bit of a watershed moment, really, in terms of the policing of the pandemic. I think at that time, the lockdown had started to ease. And as you all know from the images on social media, kind of savoury scenes right there on the beach. So just to give you an update on that particular incident, um, that investigation is ongoing. Um, we set the team up immediately the following day. Um, there are six people who have uh, been arrested for that. Um, we are in consultation with the CPS in relation to charges. But in relation to Ogamore generally as a community, I think it was um, an opportune moment really for us as a police service, along with our colleagues in uh, Vale Morgan Council, just to look at some of the issues there, longer term issues. And myself and Emma, I think is present tonight, have been in regular dialogue and meetings around some of the longer term issues, such as parking, litter, ASB, speeding and drug use. And there are a significant number of plans uh, for next year in, in, in order to be more effective really as a partnership in how we manage the issues at Ogma by Sea. Um, and from a policing perspective, we are very, very keen not to see a repeat of that incident on the 25th of June ever again. So I think the approach that we've undertaken and the engagement we've had with residents and the feedback we've had with them has been really positive. So, you know, that is, 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 some, is a good news story, really, hopefully, in terms of the way that particular village is managed and the demands are managed. And then Barry Island then, um, we had an operation running over the summer where we saw up to 20,000 people visit in a day, um, significant footfall. Again, you know, turning a lot of people away, families away from over the bridge, was trying to manage the, the consumption of alcohol at that location, particularly amongst young people. Um, we got some funding. So again, working with Emma and the team and the local authority, we, we you know, we, we we're quite pleased actually with the way it went over the summer. We received a significant amount of alcohol. Fortunately for us, there were limited arrests, but it was it was a it was a summer long operation which was quite taxing. But I think you know we had the opportunity to ensure that we would allow the the traders and the economic um, research, if you like, following COVID to take place. And you know we think we played a big part in that, along with our colleagues in the local authority. So we we're quite pleased in the way that went. Um, and there are some lessons learned from the way it's gone in the summer. But I don't think we anticipated the volume of people who would attend on Barry Island on a daily basis. And um, that was an eye opener for us and uh, certainly something that um, that we've learned from this summer. And then just general update into policing into the rural Vale. I know uh, Christian mentioned the emergency services station in Lantwit. It has been uh, successful in terms of embedding that approach. Um, we've lost the PCSO, Sean. Sean Rich has uh, retired this week, so um, she will be re replaced. But the team itself is up to full strength. There's a sergeant of five now working from there. Um, there's a number of PCOs, so PCOs work from there. And an additional development is us hoping to, um, well, we will be working alongside the fire service in Cowbridge Fire Station to have officers permanently based there as well. So that response to the Western Vale would be far greater than traveling from Barry. And we'll have a permanent visibility, if you like, in, in the areas such as Cowbridge and Lantwit. And also free up our neighborhood team in Lantwit to really tackle some of the long term issues in the Vale of Glamorgan. So as a, as a force, we've been restructuring, as you may know. Um, 
Cardiff and the Vale is now our basic command unit. So we're aligned to Cardiff and the early stages of that amalgamation have been positive in terms of the resourcing and what that looks like moving forward for us. So business as usual is, is carrying on. We've done a number of drugs warrants around the area. Um, on the 11th of September, a Bradley drug dealer was sentenced to 17 and a half years. He's ordered to pay back half a million pound and he was responsible for the distribution of up to 18 kilograms of Class A drugs across South Wales. So, and these warrants are ongoing on a daily and weekly basis. So we're still trying to tackle some of the more serious uh, harm issues for our communities despite the pandemic, and that's going to continue into the winter. And then finally, we have seen a recent spike in rogue trader incidents in Sully and in Landwit Major and in Barry. Um, it's the standard modus operandi of offering to do work, which is substandard for um, buildings that don't necessarily need work. And then obviously um, relieving you know, quite vulnerable individuals of a significant amount of money in the community. And um, it's something we relate to. And we have an operation ongoing to target those offenders at the moment. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting couple of months for us, I think, policing wise with the pandemic and the regulations in place whilst normal business continues. But resourcing wise, we're looking far better than we were at the start of the pandemic, ironically. So um, hopefully things are looking up. Thank you. OK, thank you ever so much, Chief Inspector. Have we got any questions? Town and community councillors first, please, via Matthew on web chat. Um, have a there's, little pause. There's no, there's no questions currently, Chair. OK, can I move to Councillor Penrose, please? Thank you, Chair. It's um, only an everyday housekeeping issue for Tony. Uh, and that is, I understand from residents, the community policing website is a little behind on recent moves of PCSOs in the Vale. Perhaps he could have a word with them and bring it up to date. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Councillor, I'll have a look at that. Um, it's sort of centrally run, that is. So I'll make sure that's, um, that's updated to reflect the current PCSO for the respective wards. That's something I can look at straight away. OK, thank you. Councillor Carroll, please. Um, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Tony, for that um, presentation. And thank you to everyone within the force for the um, work that you've done over the past um, six months or so. It's been um, unprecedented times and it's put a lot of pressures, extra pressures on um, on your service. So I just wanted to place that on the record. Just one question with regard to the situation with Ogbull. Admittedly, the weather is different now or is, uh, is going to be worse. So that's one thing that's likely to prevent such an incident happening. But I was just going to ask whether there was any evidence or any any work, that any information you had as to whether that incident obviously took place when licensed premises were unable to open. And while premises can open now, there are obviously restrictions as to who can use the no mixing um, households, for example. So I was just, my question really is in two parts. Firstly, is there any evidence that such incidents are more likely given that licensed premises aren't available for people to drink alcohol and um, and meet and mingle and secondly if there is such evidence what action is being taken to help combat that while these restrictions remain in place um i'll answer the, the obviously chronologically um uh, the first one um that i think you, you're right i think the licensed premises situation definitely had an impact on that gathering which was a perfect storm really around um, the summer, the unprecedented hot weather, the lack of ability to get out and about with your friends, um, the collective gathering via social media that we weren't aware of. And then I don't know if you remember, we saw similar scenes down in the basin in Cardiff Bay a uh, month or so after, which was again against the backdrop of, of an, uh, you know, unaccessible licensed premises. So whilst I think, there, I think there definitely is a correlation with that type of behaviour and the lack of ability to go to licensed premises, and the hot weather, I think that's that's unquestioned. Um, 
I think moving forward into the winter, we are alive to the potential for a repeat, repeat, or as you allude to, I think the weather plays a significant part in that. And to, albeit until 10 p.m., the license premises are now still open. Um, so we haven't seen, and we we haven't had any sight across the whole force area of a repeat, really. I know we had the rave situation going back a few months ago, but as you allude to, I think the weather will play a significant part in the ability or even the desire of young people to gather in such large groups. And that is probably the only saving grace for being freezing cold and wet in the winter for us. But I mean, it's certainly something we're alive to on a daily basis. And what it has done for us, really, I think it, obviously every day is, is a learning opportunity, but it's certainly made us far more alive to the potential for gathering. And I think the focus on licensed premises generally to manage through the COVID period in terms of the restrictions and the way that's been managed is far tighter. I think that was evident from the video of the um, the uh, pub in Cardiff, uh, Moulin Rouge pub, I think it was, where they had a big gathering outside the crowd um, and that was almost closed down the following night. So I think we're far more uh, robust in terms of our management around COVID and far more alive to the potential for gatherings of that nature. Um, and I do believe it was a one-off, uh, specifically at that location. However, it's something that's on the radar, um, certainly as we move forward into this new uncertain period now. Cheers, Tony. Uh, have, have we got any more questions, please? Councillor Perks. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, with the um, number of uh, sort of police uh, officers sort of needed to be on Barry Island policing that over the summer, how did um, the police service actually cope with uh, policing the rest of Barry? Uh, and what were the, besides COVID, what were the major sort of issues that the police sort of faced in, in the rest of Barry, sort of like the sort of different criminality that was going on? Um, if you could give us an idea about that, please. Yeah, certainly. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a chunk of funding to allow me to provide officers, which we did need, actually, as you're probably aware, down on the island over the summer months, particularly from June to September. Um, so the funding really took care of the, um, the the officers in that location. I think what it did do as well then was allow me to focus on the issues uh, and not certainly not ignore the other issues across wider Barry. Um, you know, so your antisocial behaviour, places like Maslin Park and and that type of thing. Um, some boy races down on for the Millennium. Uh, they were all still being dealt with while we managed to maintain visibility and a presence down in um, down on the island. One of the things that COVID restricted us from uh, was our ability to engage and meet people in person, obviously, and hold meetings with yourselves or, or the local community. And one of the things I think COVID has done for all of us really is, is made us adapt to technology. So what we are going to be looking forward to doing in the next couple of months is just in relation to pack meetings and so forth and engagement online as an option. So that's one thing we are looking at. But in terms of the wider Barry, um, the issues that we've dealt with are the standard issues that affect most communities, but certainly somewhere like ours, where you have quite a high level of shoplifting, uh, theft and drug use, antisocial behaviour, a lot of domestic violence, a lot of violence generally uh, was recorded in that period. And our officers on from response teams were dealing with normal business uh, throughout that entire period. But I think we were allowed to do that because I got some funding to tackle Barry Island and I'll be obtaining that funding for next year as well. Okay, thank you, Councillor Perks. Um, can I ask Councillor Cave, please? Do you have a question? Yes, thank you, Chair. It's uh, not so much a question, but just really to reiterate uh, the remarks made, made by Councillor Carroll, um, that as a committee, I'd really like us to uh, give our thanks for the fantastic role the police are playing in trying to keep us all safe in these particularly difficult and challenging times. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Have we any more questions, please? Councillor Parker Perks, I can't hear you. Sorry, I just wanted to ask whether we could have the um, contact details for um, the um, inspector as well, please. Um, I know we've had an email address for him previously, whether we could have that recirculated. OK, maybe if um, the chief inspector is happy, he can pass them to Amy and Amy, maybe you can pass it to councillors. 
Yes, Chairman, that, that's no problem. I'll liaise with Tony after the meeting. Okay. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Uh, no problem at all with that. And, and then usually for the police, I mean, I've been here two and a half years now, so I'm sort of part of the furniture. So you've got a little bit of stability as well, and not that consistent churn you often get in policing. So um, so I'll pass it out, and you can be assured that you can use that for some time yet. Lovely. Thank you very much. Any other questions, please? Can I check with Matthew, please, if there's any further comments or hands raised for Town and Community Councils? Hello, there, there's, there's no questions or hands raised currently. Thank you, Matthew. Um, can I thank you very much, Chief Inspector, for your remote visit this evening. We heard you loud and clear. I hope all Town and Community Councillors did as well. And you're free to switch off if you wish to do so. But thank you very much. Well, thanks for the opportunity to, to give you an update and uh, to take part in the meeting. And I'll circulate the email to uh, address to Amy so you can contact me about any local issues. That's not a problem at all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much indeed. Thank you. OK, moving on to agenda item six. Can I ask Mr. Tom Bowring, Head of Policy and Business Transformation, to present his report, please? Are you there, Tom? I, I am, thank you, Chair. Can you um, see and hear me OK? Yes. Excellent. Um, thank you for, um, for giving us the opportunity to bring this report to the committee this evening. Um, Attached to the, um, the report to your committee, Chair, is um, a Cabinet report that went to the Council's Cabinet on the 13th of July, um, and that was presenting the annual report for the Public Services Board, which, as members will know, is um, a statutory board that has been established by the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, um, and it brings together um, statutory partners of the health service, fire and rescue, natural resources as well as, and the local authority, as well as invited participants. Um, so we include the police within that, further education, and also um, a representative of town and community councils, Councillor Cuddy from Penarth is, is the representative. Um, we've got a duty to produce a, an annual report, um, and that's what was presented to Cabinet for their um, endorsement. We latterly then took that to Corporate Performance Committee for discussion around how we further scrutinise the work of the Public Services Board. And I wanted to bring it um, here to you because this is a report that demonstrates the work that all of those statutory and third sector organisations are doing to progress wellbeing in the Vale of Glamorgan. Um, so I think it's an important report that members have sight of and also that it contains useful information for both the committee but also representatives of town and community councils um, to use in their work. Um, so if it's okay with you, Chair, I was just going to briefly describe the report rather than going through it in great detail because it is a detailed report and then obviously be happy to take any questions after that. Yes, um, that's fine. So. Great, thank you, Councillor. Um, so the the, um, the Public Services Board has got four priorities or four um, wellbeing objectives, sorry, which are um, to enable people to get involved, so talking about engagement. It looks to reduce poverty and um, tackling issues linked to deprivation. Committed to giving children the best start in life, um, especially um, tackling issues of adverse childhood experience. And it's got an environmental theme around protecting, enhancing and, and valuing our environment as well. And, and as you can see, they're pretty broad ranging issues that um, collectively we look to bring the public sector and third sector together to try and um, deliver action to progress. Um, and in order to do that, we set four priorities for last year. Um, the first was about um, delivering the Move More, Eat Well plan, which um, Public Health Wales lead, lead on, and that's about diet, it's about the availability um, and affordability of food and the importance of exercise. Um, the second was about tackling climate change, which um, this council, alongside Natural Resources Wales, are leading on. Um, I was keen to um, get commitment from the PSB partners to do something that was a bit of a pathfinder. And I know this is one of the things that we talked about at the Voluntary Sector Joint Liaison Committee um, last summer around time banking and volunteering. So there's, there's some work going on there. And also because 
we've got a huge range of skills and experience, um, but also opportunity to learn from one another. We've got an organisational learning project, and, and at the moment, this is um, around improving engagement. And um, Christian Hadfield, who you heard from earlier um, from South Wales Fire and Rescue, is leading on on that one. Um, so the report itself um, provides you with um, an overview of what activity and challenges have been presented in each of those four um, priority areas. Um, it also presents um, the statistical data that underpins the work of the PSB. We need to produce every um, five years um, an updated wellbeing assessment which tackles lots of issues and looks to bring together lots of different demographic information and that's one of the things that I thought that, that um, City Town and Community Council representatives might find useful as an evidence base for any decisions that perhaps they're taking in their, their, um, their councils. Um, and it also then um, reflects a conversation that the PSB had in the summer around um, reflecting on the experience of coronavirus. So we've heard from the police and, and fire this evening about the particular issues that they have, um, they've faced. We, we had a session um, where we shared quite candidly the experience that the organisations have had and, and looked at how that can be taken forward um, over the next year. So the, um, the final section of the annual report then talks about how we're going to progress those priorities in um, the coming year. Um, in light of coronavirus, but also with a commitment to increase the engagement with town and community councils, um, look at how we scrutinise the work of the PSB, progress um, towards achieving age-friendly status for the Bay of Morgan, um, and also look at how we can involve young people more. Um, that is particularly following a session that we ran with um, young people on climate change and, and I've got to say um, that was a, a really fascinating um, evening to, to listen to them. Um, the report is supplemented by some case studies um, so demonstrating the work that has been underway to try and bring it to life a little bit because um, the PSB can feel a bit of an ethereal being um, but actually it's delivering some important work um, so that's um, that's highlighting some of the um, the important things that have been done. And, and a, a, a personal shout out, I suppose, to, to my colleagues who supported the Vale Heroes campaign throughout the pandemic. Um, fantastic joint working with town and community councils and the third sector um, and this local authority to, to support people in our communities. So, so there's some details of, of that there. Um, and as I said, the report now um, has been approved by Cabinet. It's been disseminated to a range of stakeholders. Um, and I'll be looking to bring an update back to Cabinet and then Corporate Performance Committee um, over the winter. And obviously, those papers are available then, should any member or representatives from Town and Community Council want to have any further information. OK, thank you, Tom. I think you've finished, or have I just lost? Have you switched your... No, sorry, I, sh I, I just went quiet then, Councillor Robinson, yes. and, 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 that's, and that's it from me. Thank you, Tom. Have I got any questions, please? Matthew, have you got any questions from Town and Community Councillors? There are no questions from Town and Community Councillors showing. Thank you, Chair. OK, we'll move on to Vale Councillors. Have Vale Councillors got any questions for Tom, please? All is quiet. OK, if I count to five. Sorry. Nothing on chat either, Chair. Sorry, sorry, Matthew. That that was Mark, Sally. He was just saying that there weren't any written comments either. OK, all right. In that case, um, the recommendations are that committee uh, considers the Vale of Glamorgan Public Service Board's annual report for 2019-20 and the progress partners are making in implementing the priorities set out in the wellbeing plan. There's no dissent, so we carry that recommendation. Thank you. Um, moving on to item agenda item number seven. Can I ask for Emma Reid, Operational Manager for Neighbourhood Services and Transport, to present this report? Thank you. 
Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, can everybody hear me? Can... Yeah, everybody's nodding. Um, I need to, oh, that's great. I need to try and uh, put my presentation up. So if you just bear with me a second. Okay, Emma, just to confirm, we can see that now. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for that. Okay, um, so you've got a report uh, before you uh, tonight, which has uh, been referred from Cabinet. Um, and I just uh, want to just run through a presentation just to make um, the report a, a little bit easier to understand and to move through. Uh, so I'm going to speak to you briefly on the prevention of alcohol related antisocial behaviour. Um, at our resorts, town centres and public open spaces. I'm going to give you an update on that and I'm also going to make you aware um, of the current consultation that we've uh, got ongoing. So here, um, what can a public space protection order do? Um, in this case, we're looking at alcohol and the purpose of that order is to provide a proportionate and robust response to alcohol related antisocial behaviour. Um, we had uh, Chief Inspector Tony Williams on earlier and he uh, advised um, the, the committee of the issues that we'd had with alcohol and the need to seize alcohol in a number of locations and the resulting antisocial behaviour, particularly over the summer and the COVID period. The aim of the order is to um, effectively manage land to prevent any um, antisocial behaviour escalating. And that is done by providing um, uh, relevant officers with additional powers to issue warnings, seize and confiscate alcohol and stop alcohol consumption. The powers also allow that if a person continues to drink that alcohol when required to stop by an authorised officer, and or does not surrender that alcohol in his possession, his or her possession when required to do so by an alcohol, um, by an authorised officer, or refuses to hand over any containers of alcohol, whether they're sealed or unsealed. Um, in fact, they don't even have to be containers. If, if, if we believe that they're alcohol, then um, they can be, they need to be handed over. Um, we can confiscate and we can also issue a, a fixed penalty notice. The aim of this order is to protect, protect the land, to protect our open spaces, to protect our beaches, um, and it's also to protect the majority of people who are law-abiding law -abiding citizens. There is a legal test um, which is required before any such order can be made, and that test um, is twofold. So um, the first part of that test um, requires that the behaviour being restricted must fulfil um, or must be likely to have a detrimental effect on the quality of life uh, of those in the locality, so those in the area that the order applies to. And also it needs, it, it's likely that the activities will be carried out in a public place within the area and that they will have that such effect. The second condition is um, that that activity is likely to be of a persistent or continuing nature um, and it, it is likely to uh, it, those activities are likely to be unreasonable and though then you can justify the restrictions imposed by the notice so that's the legal test that we need to apply when when looking at these orders just a bit of background um, Believe it or not, we do actually already have some of these orders in place, um, alcohol uh, public space protection orders, and they're in a variety of locations, and they've been around since 2017. Um, we've got some in Penarth, Barry, Roos, Lantwick Major and Cowbridge. However, those are due to expire in October 2020. Um, so following issues over summer uh, over the summer this year um, uh, with the good weather and also COVID related issues with people holidaying at home, um, we've also added to this consultation other areas um, where we've had issues and where we consider there are issues. And uh, those locations um, include Cosmeston Country Park, Porth Kerry Country Park, Penarth Pier. Um, and the Esplanade, Ogmore uh, Beach area, which um, uh, Tony Williams referred to earlier, Lanswick Major Beach, and also Roos Point. There, I've just attached there the link uh, to the cabinet um, papers, but you have got those in your papers tonight, so I won't go to it. 
So the consultation, um, it did actually start uh, back in August, um, but it's been a quite a popular consultation. So we have decided to extend it until the 2nd of November, 2020. Um, I, I've, see if I can do this now, bear with me. So this is the link. I don't know whether it's gonna let me do it, but we'll try. Um, so um, it's not gonna let me do it, so apologies about that. So there is a link here, which um, I can give details in the chat or I can send on. And that link takes you directly to the consultation. It includes all the current areas that, uh, um, uh, that are subject uh, to the orders that we're looking to renew. And it also contains all of the new areas and all of the maps for those areas. Um, we've also erected site, site notices at each of the sites um, where the orders um, uh, where the orders will, will come in. And we'd obviously welcome um, any of your feedbacks either tonight or on the proposals via, via the website. So next steps, once we close the consultation and once we've uh, looked at all the feedback um, that we've received, um, we'll obviously consider that feedback and we'll determine um, in conjunction um, with the police as well, uh, how, how we move forward. And currently it's planned that a report will be presented to council in uh, December this year to outline the next steps. Um, the uh, the order is a council decision, so we do need to have any ratification of any order um, by the council. So that's all I've got to say. Um, any, if you've got any questions, um, I, I've got Colin Smith, um, the operational manager, uh, with me this evening. So I know Colin has been very close to um, public space protection orders for a number of years. So between us, um, if there's any questions, we're happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Um, Matthew, do you have any town and community council questions? There's no questions in the chat. Thank you, Chair. OK, let me know if there are, please. And Vale councillors, any questions? No. Councillor Perks? Thank you. I just wanted to ask around the new orders that are, are coming into place uh, and if um, either of the officers could just give us a little bit of background of the issues that they have faced um, in those particular spots um, during this uh, the, the summer and that's led to them being in, sort of incorporated in, in this please. Colin do you want to take that or shall I as you haven't had a chance to speak? Yeah, sure, I'll pick up that one. Thanks, Emma. So, um, welcome, yeah, I'm Colin. really referring on. Good evening. Sorry. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. So, uh, uh, in response to Councillor Perth's query, um, really it's going back to the police report we heard earlier. We had the problems at Ogmore over the beach over the summer, likewise at Cosmeston Country Park and Penarth Esplanade. Sometimes occasionally we get on the cliff top and also on the beach itself. And the pier has been ongoing for a couple of years, to be honest. It's just we missed the boat last time for the previous PSPOs, and we we're waiting for the next time for them to be renewed for the opportunity to include those. Roost Point, likewise, we introduced bylaws a couple of years ago, and it's been very difficult managing those with the fishing on the lagoon and camping and antisocial behaviour that's been experienced for some time now. So collectively, those are the areas identified where we've had the most problems, but strangely enough, we've never had any PSPOs on them. And it was for those reasons that those are included. It's worth noting that because we've had a couple of queries on Panar's front about the, um, the consumption of alcohol and it's not to address alcohol where it's consumed and the licensing arrangements so for restaurants and cafes and bars, etc. This is purely to do with antisocial behaviour and that's where the offence comes in on PSPOs. It's not an offence to drink at all. It's an it's offence to have antisocial behaviour as of consumption of alcohol. And that's really probably, you know, really deals with most of the questions we get. Is that okay, Councillor Perks? Yes, thank you. That's that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Councillor Wilson, did you want to ask a question? Can you hear me? Can yes. you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, I just want to ask a question. Obviously, 
We had lots of concerns earlier on in the summer with Panath Panath Espinade, but I think it's now much more clearer as to what people can do. We had a lot of issues with people drinking away from those licensed premises, and it seems to be a lot more settled. In fact, I was down there a couple of days ago, and it is much better than it was. But my, my question is, obviously, going forward on this, in terms of the consumption of alcohol, bearing in mind we have got some major events coming up, notably November the 5th and fireworks. And um, I just wonder what sort of orders are in place Hello? for that, because I do think that's going to be an important issue going forward. Yeah, so um, the first thing on the Panath, I would have to agree with you. That it has settled down, particularly with the new cafes and the new restaurants that have opened. It certainly seems to settle down, but the PSPO will give us an opportunity to deal with the matters away from those areas, like I mentioned on the pier, and sometimes we get occasions where people go down onto the beach in the slipway. So really it's to tackle the antisocial behaviour, not really deal with people who are honestly and responsibly going to cafes and restaurants and just enjoying themselves, to be honest, or for an event. Um, in terms of... Um, um, what you're saying about the uh sorry um council Wilson, your second point of your question yeah the second point was really about the fireworks um coming up on november the 5th and making sure we got sufficient control it was obviously talking to the police yeah to make sure there isn't too yeah, much it, consumption it, of alcohol but i know it does go on no and, and clearly okay there may be some public displays being banned because of COVID, we would probably, we would yeah, take there's the still same, maybe informal the, displays on our open areas in particular. Yeah, we would take the same stance as we've done all year, to be honest, on Hello. the technicality. Hello can you hear there. me, Pastor Wilson? We can hear you. Oh, can you hear okay. me okay? So, okay. Uh, yeah. Yes, I can. I can hear you. Oh. We would take exactly the same stance as we've done all summer, Councillor Wilson. So um, lo most of the time, the police manage the situation like a PSPO, but a lot of the time people weren't arrested or, fi or um, fixed penalty notes issued. All we do is deal with the, the antisocial behaviour, which you can do with, by an arrest anyway, or you would confiscate the alcohol. We would do those measures anyway, even though the PSPO may not be technically in effect. So in terms of the bonfire night, the Halloweens, etc., we would carry on with the same stance as we've done all summer. Okay, thank you, Colin. Thank Does you. that answer your question, Councillor Wilson? Yeah. Okay. Any more questions, please, from anybody? No? All is quiet. Matthew, no questions, your end? No, nothing further, thank you. OK, in that case, can this committee um, pass the recommendation um, that we consider the contents of the prevention of alcohol related antisocial behaviour, resorts, town centres and public open spaces report? I think we're all happy to recommend that. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, I think um, thank you, Emma, for, for that. And thank you, Colin, for, for your um, help as well. I think that brings us to the end of our remote virtual meeting. Um, can I um, could I just say that uh, can I just remind all town and community council representatives that Request for consideration forms are available via Democratic Services should any of you wish to raise a matter for this committee to consider um, next time we meet. And the meeting of this committee is next scheduled for Tuesday, the 26th of January 2021. Um, and I think that brings us to the end of this meeting. Can I just check with Amy that she's happy with everything? Hello, Amy. Thank you. Hello, thank you, Chairman. Yes, no, that's everything. Thank you very much. There was um, there was no objection on the recommendations, so they have stood, um, and we've considered all questions from our town and community councillors. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. Done, so you I'd went like very well.
<laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor right. Parker. Yeah. Good night. Thank you, Tom. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you all. Good night. Bob. Good night. <laughs>